The LifePak 20E defibrillator monitor can be used for either demand or non-demand pacing. Demand pacing is used for most patients, so that's what we'll show here. First of all, before you start pacing someone, always consider the need for patient analgesia or sedation. We have the ECG leads on and lead two is displayed. Now we'll place the therapy electrodes. We'll use anterior posterior here. You can use either the anterior lateral or anterior posterior position. Place this electrode with the heart over the left precordium, just below the nipple. It's important to put the electrode with the heart here rather than on the back because if the electrodes are reversed, it might require a higher current to achieve capture. Place the other electrode on the patient's back in the infrascapular area, like this. Be careful to keep adequate separation between the ECG electrodes and the therapy electrodes to minimize artifact on the ECG. Press PACER. You should see sense markers on each QRS, like these. If you don't see sense markers or they're on the T-wave, select another lead until you do see sense markers. Now, press RATE. Press the up or down arrows to get the rate you need. Press the current up arrow repeatedly to increase the pacing current. Now you can see these pace markers, indicating that pacing current is being delivered. You should notice the patient beginning to twitch. Increase the current until you see electrical capture. You'll have electrical capture when each pace marker is followed by a wide QRS and a T wave, like this. It's important to be aware that the average current needed for capture is between 50 and 100 milliamps. The final step is to ensure that you also have mechanical capture. Palpate the patient's pulse and obtain a blood pressure. Pulse oximetry may also be useful. Observe the patient continuously while actively pacing. The patient's response to pacing therapy may change over time. If you are monitoring pulse oximetry while pacing, you will see the patient's pulse rate up here instead of a heart rate. If you are not monitoring SpO2, you will see a dashed line instead of a heart rate, and the heart rate alarms are disabled. It's important to frequently assess the patient for mechanical capture. If you need to check the patient's underlying rhythm, press and hold pause to temporarily reduce the pacing rate. Release the button to resume pacing at the set rate. To stop pacing, press pacer. If an ECG lead comes off, you'll lose sight of the rhythm, but pacing switches to non-demand or asynchronous mode, and pacing continues at 100% of the set rate, regardless of the patient's underlying rhythm. To re-establish demand pacing, reattach the ECG electrode. If you're increasing the current but not getting capture, remember, for pacing current to be delivered, the pacing rate needs to be set higher than the patient's heart rate. If you're pacing and the patient needs to be defibrillated, press charge. Pacing stops automatically. Proceed with defibrillation as described in the manual defibrillation section. And that's it for pacing.